Hello everyone. Welcome to BLK Pediatric Practice. I am Dr. Swati Bharadwaj. I take care of pediatric nephrology services at BLK Center for Child Health. Today I would be talking about extraordinary daytime urinary frequency in children, which is also commonly known as pulacuria. This term was given by International Childhood Continence Society, also known as pulacuria or benign daytime urinary frequency. This is simply an abnormally increased daytime urinary frequency in a toilet trained child who was previously normal. Uh, there is no dysuria or painful maturation and the urine analysis is normal. Basically you rule out other organic causes. It is a common condition but under recognized. Some studies say it may be as common as 12%. Its prevalence may be as high as 12%. It may be as common as uh, urinary tract infections in toilet trained children in pediatric practice, if not more common. It leads to parental anxiety. The child feels exhausted by having to go to washroom again and again and leads to unwarranted evaluation most of the times. So before knowing what is abnormal, I want to tell you about normal bladder function. The urine which is produced by the kidneys is transported to the bladder through the ureters and function of bladder is to store that urine at low pressure and when time is appropriate to aid in its expulsion. So bladder function matures with age as in uh, with increase in capacity uh, which can be calculated by a simple formula 30 plus age into 3 for children up to 12 years of age. Bladder capacity increases from infancy to childhood and also achievement of voluntary control, which is also equal, equated to toilet training. As we know, daytime urinary continence is achieved prior to nighttime urinary continence. And once the latter is achieved, we say the child has been toilet trained. The normal urinary frequency may be as high as 20 times in a newborn, while in a toilet trained child, five to eight times is normal. More than that, we consider as increased urinary frequency. So as this diagram shows, when at, uh, bladder is filling, the detrusor relaxes, the urethral sphincter contracts and the pelvic floor muscle also contracts. As the bladder continues to fill, there is awareness of the sensation to urinate, but one can suppress it and hold urine until it reaches a critical point where it is, uh, the bladder will no longer be able to hold the urine. So where in a socially appropriate place, uh, the act of micturition starts when the detrusor muscle contracts and the urethral sphincter as well as the pelvic floor muscles relax. So problems can happen in the storage function of the bladder which may present as urgency, frequency, nocturia or incontinence or in the voiding function of the bladder where, wherein we see slow stream or intermittent stream or hesitancy in starting a urinary stream some children have to strain while passing urine or there is terminal dribbling. While after the act of micturition is completed, sometimes there may be post-micturition dribble or incomplete voiding. These all signs and symptoms point towards uh, disturbance in bladder function. So what do we see in polacuria? A child who has been previously toilet trained suddenly starts going to washroom frequently. Peak ages at five to six years and males are slightly more frequently affected. The frequency may vary from once in an hour to up to 30 to 40 times in a day and it may be exhausting for the child. And if we take detailed history, typically urinary stream is normal. There is no pain in micturition. There is no nocturnal enuresis. There's no change in bowel habits. Neither there is increase in thirst or water intake. And child is typically able to hold urine without leaking accidents when he is distracted or when there is no place to discharge urine, like when he is playing games or watching a favorite cartoon. So this is not any problem in the bladder function. It is simply an increased awareness of the fullness of the bladder and child is not able to suppress the desire to go to washroom repeatedly and that results in increased urinary frequency. And often one may identify the stressors like change in school, a recent urinary tract infection, sickness in some loved one, etc. And one needs to differentiate this condition from other conditions which may also present with increased urinary frequency, most common being a urinary tract infection, 
polyuric conditions like diabetes insipidus or diabetes mellitus, sometimes pinworm infestation or neurogenic bladder. So what investigations are needed? First step is obviously detailed history and physical examination. Then we proceed to get a urine routine done and urine culture if there are any symptoms of UTI which is typically normal in this condition. A random blood sugar will rule out diabetes mellitus. A 24-hour voiding report will help us assess the severity of the situation. It will help us assess the expected bladder capacity uh, by the first morning voided volume, which will tell us that bladder capacity is normal. We can compare it for that for the age. And on follow, we can do repeated 24-hour voiding records to see how the child is improving. And typically ultrasound or MCOG is not indicated unless there is a reason to suspect the child may have other cause. So how polyuria is treated? One should know that it is a harmless condition and it will improve on its own within weeks to months. Sometimes it may take as long as six months and it may recur also. It is important to tell the parents and caregivers to ignore the condition. If we ignore the condition, this leads to faster resolution of symptoms. It is important to reassure the child not to punish him and tell him that nothing is wrong. He can hold the urine without leaking accidents. And there is no reason to cut down fluid intake. That will not help, but it is important to cut down on sweetened beverages, aerated beverages and caffeinated drinks. Avoid constipation. That may also contribute or delay the resolution. Another approach is timed not voiding. That is, we ask the child to hold the urine for a stipulated period of time. For beginning, say it could be 20 to 30 minutes. And if the child is able to hold urine, uh, the child is rewarded. And similarly, we go on increasing the period gradually. So, but it may be exhausting for the caregivers as well as the child and it may interrupt the day-to-day -day activity of the child. So it can be done in interspersed periods over days or weeks, if not 24 hours a day. And it is important to maintain a reward chart to motivate the child. And as there is no problem in the bladder function per se, so anticholinergics, oxybutynin, which are typically used in an overactive bladder situation will not be effective. So reassurance, time not voiding, rewarding, voiding postponement, these are the strategies which have to be used for management. But on follow-up, if there is any change in symptoms, like pain during maturation, new onset bedwetting, excessive thirst, excessive increase in urine output, then we need to revisit the diagnosis and investigate appropriately. Thank you for patient listening. Stay tuned for more videos.